I almost died. In today's video, we're trying to survive 100 days in Minecraft 1.19 wild update on an SMP. The goals for the video are to start a tadpole empire, save an ally from bandits, and to slay the warden. Also, if you could hit that subscribe button because these videos aren't easy to make, that'd mean the world to me. Finally, smack the like button for the algorithm and let's get straight into it. Days 1 to 10. Besides the normal stuff, our main goal is to find a mangrove biome. Now, this biome is one of the new ones that came in 1.19. If you guys don't know, this is where the frogs dwell, and that's where we gotta go to finish up first goal. So let's go ahead and finish up some of the basics. We went ahead and collected some wood, crafted ourselves a pickaxe, started mining, and made ourselves some cobblestone pickaxes and axes. And then I saw a sheep, and I killed it in cold blood. Listen, okay, he probably deserved it. Who knows what that sheep could have done? I mean, I don't, but I killed it anyways. After we got that stuff out of the way, we then went to search for a village. Villages are good for a variety of reasons, but the main thing is it's a really good source of food because you can craft these hay bales into bread. We like that. And there are a few chests there, so I'm trying to see what's in them, you know? Lo and behold, there was a bunch of food and some iron to start out with. But the most valuable thing we found here is these three diamonds. Like, what kind of luck is that? Probably gonna make that thing into a pickaxe. Or am I? I'm telling y'all. After we were done looting the village, this began our first journey to find the mangrove biome. It looks very similar to a swamp, to be fair. So I just kept walking. While we were exploring, we actually found a bit of a shipwreck. I didn't know where the chest was. There was a lot of sand. Probably was one in there. I was just too lazy to actually excavate it. So we moved on from there. We ended up finding a desert biome. And within the desert biome, we found a desert temple. The issue with the desert temple is it was low-key kind of buried. So there was a lot of mobs inside. And this is a clip of me almost getting annihilated. But we pulled through and we looted it. What else will we do? It was trash loot, nothing really noteworthy. But this is where things get a little bit interesting because this all began when we found ourselves a jungle biome. Don't worry, I'll get to it, there's more. We've yet to even see another player on this server yet. But after walking through the jungle aimlessly for a while, we ended up finding an ancient temple. I'm pretty sure these things are kind of rare. I'm not too sure though. But once we entered it i mined one of the floors and you know found the first chest and in the second chest there was a booby trap but the booby trap missed me because i'm just better and we got three more diamonds let's go an interesting thing about the server is they have a slash wild command and the slash wild command took me to this random location we didn't see any player built anything so far until this very moment days 11 to 20 we were on a cliffside in the jungle biome and we noticed something a little bit suspicious in the distance because there were just random blocks of dirt so you know me i decided to investigate it and what we end up finding is this dirt structure now i don't think it's actually in use anymore but there was a little bit of a mine at the bottom of it it basically looked abandoned but it was definitely not naturally generating so i was kind of curious as to what was going on here now whether this was a good idea or a bad idea i had no clue at that time little did i know what i was getting myself into there's a bunch of leftover dirt that someone placed trying to make some sort of a weird bridge i'm not too sure and this is me doing a bit of parkour over it it got pretty strange and i thought i was looking at acacia wood but this was actually the new mangrove wood that we were looking at which meant there was a mangrove biome nearby so i kept moving forward one hop after another we then find ourselves at our first official player base that we found so far on the smp it looked like a cool base to me you know it was all like mangrove looking and he incorporated all the new blocks into the house now i wasn't trying to do nothing you know i wasn't gonna rob him or anything like who do you guys take me for i'm no felon i'm a good samaritan okay i do my taxes and stuff I think. But the person that was living there didn't feel the same way and decided to punch me out of the place. Yeah, he was a hostile. We'll name him Jeffrey for now. Jeffrey ain't be liking us foreigners, bro. And this was me even trying to escape the vicinity, but I was in the water, so it was really difficult because there was a lot of mobs. So I climbed up a tree and shot an arrow at him because I wasn't done with you, Jeffrey. You think we're playing some game, huh? Well, we are, but you know what I mean. I'm coming back for you, Jeffrey. You'll see. You'll see. You made the wrong enemy. That's all I'm gonna say. It's time for us to get to work. All right, I know we got nothing right now, but we gotta get some armor bro we gotta start mining and that's what we did we got ourselves a bunch of iron we got ourselves a bunch of blocks to work with look at these cool cave generations though this stuff looks sick i've literally been just walking aimlessly throughout this entire cave system and it just endlessly keeps going there's actually no dead end to this place finally i found a spot that i just kind of wanted to chill for a bit and smell all of the iron that we have here we go made myself a helmet a chest plate some pants and some boots all ironed up baby now as for the plan against jeffrey i was thinking we'd go for more of an explosive Route. Usually we'd go for the burn down their house route, but you know what? I was feeling a little feisty today. Afterwards, we needed a bunch of sand for the explosives in the first place, and we need about five per TNT. So I started digging up a bunch of sand. Not to mention, I probably needed glass for a base anyways. Two things knocked out all at once. That's what I like to see. Oh, and I also went creeper hunting because I needed some gunpowder for the explosives. God, I hate creeper hunting. Like, y'all really didn't need to make this so difficult. But whatever, you know what? It don't come easy, all right? That's why we gotta take matters into our own hands. Jeffrey is going down. All right, that's enough. I think we got all the materials we need. 
Now we also want to do our second mission, which is to make ourselves a tadpole empire. Cause why not? That just that just sounds cool to me. You know, like imagine someone coming up to you and they're like, "Yo, what you got on you? Frogs, tadpoles? What you want?" I could literally be the black market dealer for frogs and tadpoles. That sounds sick. So we pulled up back at the mangrove biome that we originally found, just at a different side, so we don't actually alert the person living there. Cause you know, like the last time we met him, Jeffrey was kind of mean. But none of that today. I took the leads off of a wandering trader, went into the mangrove swamp, and took two frogs yep i'm the frog napper that was me then i brought it over to a secured island made a little bit of a pit the frogs jumped out of it but then i, I made it a deeper pit and gave them some slime balls because apparently that's how you breed them and this is how it went down so for you guys that don't know when one frog really likes another frog they spit out babies yeah that's what happens but yeah on a real note i really thought this place was safe from anything from intruders okay maybe not from intruders but like let's be real here it's a pit who's gonna go into this pit and want to kill some frogs right why would anyone want to even kill these frogs these guys are adorable only a psychopath would ever think of killing these guys but i wasn't done there all right we still need to get ourselves some more diamonds bro i was trying to get stacked so i tested my luck at a different location and began mining again days 21 to 30 what i actually didn't end up thinking i would find is the the freaking stronghold the way i was able to tell is because i was going down this really narrow cave and then boom stone bricks what and then i heard the silverfish so it instantly clocked and you know i was kind of hyped to actually explore this thing we found the closest chest and then it ended up being complete utter trash thanks minecraft i'm glad you're on my side but yeah you know we took a little bit of a look around issue was we actually didn't have any of the materials to actually go to the end we had a lot of work to do i think this time around i actually want to get this fight done early so we could get elytras i feel like if we were to actually blow up Jeffrey's house, we need an escape plan, and an elytra would be a perfect one. One of the eyes of the portal were actually filled, so we only needed 11 eye of enders. I came down here without an actual bucket of water, so I had to go back up, get two buckets of water, make an infinite source, and then start making ourselves our portal. Now looking back at the footage, this looks so extensive. Like, I swear I could have found any easier way to make this thing. But you know what? If it works, it works. You know, no need to fix something that isn't broken. Let's be real here, so don't be clowning me for this. And there we go. We were finally in the nether. Days 31 to 40. As any good Minecraft speedrunner should know, the first thing we have to find ourselves is a nether castle because this is where blazes dwell. And so after a bunch of exploration, we finally found ourselves a nether castle. The thing I didn't account for was all the wither skeletons that were with the blazes. It's just a minor inconvenience, right? We can we can definitely handle it. No. I was completely wrong. I almost died to that thing. The only reason I didn't die was because of this golden apple. So W golden apple. Let's be real here. I really don't want to restart this challenge. We ended up finding a bunch of one-off blazes, which is kind of annoying because there wasn't any spawner and I didn't hear anything. After killing a bunch of them, I got no blaze rods. What kind of RNG is that? But after a while, we finally found ourselves a blaze room and we started whacking them. Got all the blaze rods we needed and we did. Next up on the list was ender pearls. Now there's two ways to actually get them. My preferred method is sticking a boat. Oh, pause. What I meant to say is placing a boat right next to an enderman which will then capture the enderman and you could kill it without it killing you or a bastion where we could trade with piglins we'll do that after i was honestly testing my luck but they just kept dropping ender pearls issue was i couldn't really get the 11th one i needed so i gave up plus i was kind of getting tired of the blue not just me days 41 to 50 i don't know but eventually i ended up going across this lava lake because i saw a little bit of a structure in the middle of it was it safe no would you try this at home no all it took was one gas or like a blaze or any random mob to hit me off and i'm done i'm gone fortunately enough i survived um i believe these things are called ruined portals you guys can correct me if i'm not nothing special in there but lo and behold right in front of it was a bastion that's what we're here for but they're not very nice people they instantly attack you if you're not wearing anything gold and for some reason i didn't wear anything gold listen okay i can critique myself now i can't lie to you bastions are actually a really dangerous place and often a really easy way to die it's a one-way ticket to hell even though the nether is kind of like the equivalent of hell so we had to be really careful about this i was basically keeping my distance and staying on top of blocks for the most part then i started burning piglins because you know i'm a bit of a psychopath i mean it's kind of enjoyable look at them burning in agony and this is where we actually got ourselves some diamond tools which was goaded by the way this stuff replaced all of my iron stuff i mean hey the pickaxe even had fortune 3 on it that's crazy it was it was too the footage said too. It's still a golden enchantment nonetheless. I also used all of our gold to then trade with some of the piglins. And luckily enough, we got ourselves three ender pearls. I, I think it was three. I don't know. But that was more than enough than we actually needed. We also got a bunch of other random items and stuff that we really don't need right now. So I basically just left all that stuff there. I mean, let's be real here. Why the heck would I need crying obsidian or any of the other trash that they trade us? The answer to that question is we don't. Now, one thing I actually didn't expect is while I was searching for more of the chest, there was actually another player there 
that basically hit me off of the bastion. I was unsure if they were actually chasing me, so what I ended up doing was throwing an ender pearl. I, I know, I kind of used up one. But it's okay, we have extras. No need to sweat about it. Nah, but it was actually crazy. Like, imagine dying out here in the nether because someone smacked you off. The audacity to the man that actually had the nerve to do that? Oh, wait till I find out who that was. Like, I'm really not playing games out here, bro. This stuff takes so long to record. I'm not being eliminated by no rando. The rest of the time in the nether, we spent getting back to the portal of ours. That way, we can craft up the eye of enders that we need and finally get into the end. Get my little hands on an elect. Days 51 to 60 and we were back. I also crafted up the eye of enders But one thing I realized is we don't got no wool no beds no nothing bruh So we had to mine back up to the surface find ourselves some random plains biome where I finally found ourselves a sheep Little do these sheep know what was coming at them. Nah, I'm just playing I killed one of them But then I realized shearing them would be a much better option so I could get a bunch more wool It's the most logical thing to do in this situation instead of slaughtering an entire family after we finished up with that We went right back down to the portal and place the last eye of ender i wasn't really too worried we got ourselves a crossbow and a bunch of arrows as well when we were out there so the crystals i hope shouldn't be too big of a deal or a problem i just hope i still got the ender dragon killing technique on me i haven't done it in a while all right cut me some slack and here we were we mined to the very top of the area and started shooting at some of the crystals one two three they were going down like flies you know when i got a little bit comfortable i started shooting at the dragon but the dragon swooped down and basically hit me into the air. Luckily, I clutched up with the water bucket. Now ignore all of the shots that I actually miss here because I don't miss at all, so that's not me. But the ones I do hit, that's completely me. That's all me. My main technique was the bed technique, where you basically place a bed right next to the head and then place a block. If you stand behind the block, you actually don't get attacked by the bed. This was me burning up because they actually burn the surrounding area when you right-click a bed, which was kind of annoying because I almost died to it. Yeah, it wasn't even the ender dragon that was a threat. It was me. And this was the last bed, and we finally killed the ender dragon i also started putting out the fires because i thought the xp was gonna drop in the fire and burn up i wanted the xp i mean who wouldn't after beating a boss in minecraft either way this ain't even the difficult boss bro it's the warden that i'm worried about after the fight i then collected all of the exp and i collected the egg because i wanted the egg kind of like a souvenir of the time i almost killed myself with a bed and then we built up to the little portal that takes us near the area that the end city is supposed to be in we explored that place for actually quite a bit but finally we ended up finding an end city. Now this place actually had the ship with it. So conveniently enough, that's where the elytras are at. Only issue is we actually had to get up there. That's where things got a little tricky because shulkers spit out this like weird cubic ball thing that gives you levitation, which is really annoying by the way, and could be our one way ticket to actually resetting the challenge. I ain't doing that. Now, you know, in my experience with all of this stuff, I've dealt with shulkers before. They're not that difficult. That's what I went into it thinking, but man, was I wrong. Now I'm not even joking, regardless of what you're doing in there, as long as they have sight on you, they will be spitting out attacks, projectiles, and they will not stop unless you are dead or just out of their sight first part of it honestly wasn't too bad you know i got hit a couple times and i used it to levitate myself up some of the stairs that's what i'm to believe you're supposed to do but once we got up to this huge area things started going south well at first it was all nice you know i was floating up i had my shield up and stuff but look just take a look at this i swear i was floating for the entire duration of that even my shield couldn't help me I had to quick build on the side of the area. By far, that had to be one of the most stressful situations I've ever been in. Cause like, you're not even in control of your own movement. You're just floating. Now I know what them little dandelion puffs feel like. Crazy. From here on, I had to be on the defense, okay? I healed up and I had to make sure that I did not get body like that again. Because the challenge almost ended here. Like, I know I was the one that wanted the elytra, but is it really worth all this? But after finally reaching the top, we took some of the loot from there and then started bridging all the way over to the side. But all of this, honestly, I was terrified because what if one of the shulker boxes actually saw me and spits out one of them floaty things? Like, what am I supposed to do? The only thing I can do is probably maybe water bucket, but I don't got reflexes like that. I still took the risks. Not to mention, on the boat itself, there's shulker boxes there too. Honestly, it was not an easy trip at all. We nabbed the stuff in those chests and took the elytra and flew ourselves out of there. Funny enough, we flew so far, we ended up finding another end city, but I, I didn't really need to loot it. I was just here for the elytra. Now we gotta make ourselves some fireworks for an actual perfect escape. Jeffrey ain't even gonna see us, bro. We're gonna be so fast. Day 61 to 75. A huge chunk of this was actually a bit of a repeat from before, except this time we're not really making TNT. 
We are preparing for fireworks, but once we finally got enough of the paper and enough of the gunpowder for it, we then crafted up some fireworks and started flying around the world. This was actually to complete the ally goal. It's these blue little things. I don't really know what they do, but we also have two diamonds in preparation for when we finally find one. After traveling through a bunch of biomes, we eventually found ourselves a pillager base. Things were about to get serious. You see that cage down there? That's where the allies are trapped, so we have to kill all of these pillagers for them to be extracted safe and sound i'm not gonna lie to you i got a little bit over my head because i only had iron armor all right no diamond armor no enchantments no nothing so when the fight actually began it was a bunch of shit but like look at this thing the amount of anxiety i got from this fight alone was immense but check out some of these moves but i was dodging this stuff like it was the matrix kind of honestly team pillagers had no chance got me dodging bullets left and right i was also a little bit worried because at any moment more reinforcements could either spawn or just pull up from inside of the tower so i had to be quick with it but somehow we managed pulled through broke the allies out gave them diamonds and they started following us i got a little bit worried because an elytra with fireworks is really really fast so i didn't know if they could keep up so i kept making these weird twirls i'm just clarifying what i was doing all right because it does look a little weird now that i look back at it but listen okay it would be kind of pointless if we broke them out just for them to escape again i gave them a whole diamond each all right that stuff is not cheap like, you ever try buying a diamond in real life those stuff are expensive bro but to be fair i've never bought a diamond before myself so i, I really can't tell you look at me bro i'm flying i ended up trying to save them by trapping them in a village which doesn't really sound any better than the cage that we just got them to escape from but you know what i got the gold done all right and then for some reason a whole pillager raid started they wanted their goods back but listen okay we weren't gonna let these poor innocent villagers die in cold bloods because of us all right we brought the allies here we bought the valuables of the pillagers right to this village we were not gonna put them in harm's way it's our mess and we're gonna clean this mess up no matter what gets thrown at us whether it's a pillager one of them pillager dog beast thingies or even the ender dragon i'ma treat this place like it was my own home ah, i'm just playing we didn't have any diamond nothing all right we weren't gonna fight these guys so i dipped after that huge trip of exploring we then decided to go back and check on our tadpoles we had to make sure they were growing up strong and healthy you know what i mean day 76 to 80 after finally reaching the little den that i actually stuffed the frogs into i noticed that they were actually all gone not even the little baby tadpoles were left behind but the thing i noticed was that they actually dropped something they dropped this which i was very confused about because i swore the last time i was here i left them completely healthy and fine and all i could think about is a little someone that lived not too far from here that has a little bit of a vendetta against me jeffrey had to be him there would have been nobody else it couldn't have been the guy from the bastion because i teleported away from him how would he even know where i was going the only person that could have kept track of my movements was jeffrey the frogs didn't deserve this they were living happily not free but happily had a family going they had so much more to live for it was all taken from them by jeffrey i crafted up the remaining tnt that i needed for this mission and went straight to the mangrove woods this is the first time i actually went into jeffrey's house it's a little small i thought it would be a little bit more extravagant at least on the inside but i mean hey it still looked cool from the outside all right and so we began rigging the place luckily jeffrey wasn't even at home at that time he was probably in some mining trip gives us the perfect chance to strike he ain't even gonna know what hit him and there goes his house we fled with the elytra we left the scene of crime never to be seen again. i'm kidding we came back to burn some of the stuff because there were some leftovers you gotta conceal the evidence that's how it works with this business after the whole situation with jeffrey was finally done we then went on another bit of a voyage. Now this one was a little bit more difficult because we had to find the warden. Now the thing is, I went cave to cave but I couldn't find anything. It was just like all these green biomes and like these weird cave structures. To be fair, in comparison to old Minecraft, this is a lot better and it's a lot better than the old cave generation. But we actually ended up finding something a little bit better than the warden spawn itself. We found ourselves an ancient city. Now, for those that don't know, this ancient city is actually one of the new structures that came out in 1.9. It's got its own separate set of loot and it's actually the perfect place to find warden spawners multiple warden spawners Which is the part I'm a little bit worried about because you know Your boy's not trying to fight more than one warden because this thing's hard enough as it is But it was finally time for us to face the warden head-on. All right 
No more holding back. We're fighting this dude till the end. We started mining a little bit to search for this beast. And after finding the spawner, we got really spooked out by it, to be honest. It's really dark down there. Not to mention the effect you get from even making noise there is crazy. Funny enough, I actually didn't know how to spawn it. So I spawned it in by accident. But I could definitely tell I spawned it in because of all the sound effects that I was hearing left and right. There is no doubt about that. The one thing I didn't realize about this thing is that it had a sonic screech. And the screech went through walls like what am i supposed to even do about that i played on the defensive and anytime it hit me it would bring me down so low that i have to run away and heal up again this was the unfortunate loop that i had to go in and i had to sneak back towards him eventually he managed to fall into a little bit of a pit and i trapped him around dirt and when i got the chance i then started hitting him with my sword and after so much food was wasted and so much damage was taken we finally slayed the warden. And he dropped this weird sensor thing. I don't really know what it is. But hey, it looks cool. And it isn't one of the other stuff that's around there. And I actually decided to explore a little bit because I saw some chests. The chests were okay. It had some unique items in there though. And then I may or may not have accidentally spawned in another warden because, you know, apparently sound wakes them up and i ran for my life days 80 to 90. now one thing that i completely forgot to do is actually make a base i usually do this in all of my 100 day videos and this time around i think i'm gonna make one in the mangrove biome now i know what you're thinking it's not gonna be in the same mangrove biome as the one we just blew up and burnt down it's gonna be in a different one completely far away from the old base we're not taking no chances out here there was also an extra tax on hand that i actually wanted to complete and that was the guardian fight to simply put it it's a lot more accessible since we only have 20 days left of this challenge in the first place because it's either that or the wither and i'm not trying to test my luck with no wither skeletons for those that don't know wither skeletons do not drop wither skulls well they do but it's like a really rare chance so i'm not risking that so the house of ours will actually need two extensions one a place for all the gathered frogs to actually live in in harmony and peace no frog killers allowed and the second is actually keeping our allies in a prison i mean a house of their own they're free i, I swear so we set off to actually locate a mangrove biome now the first one we found was actually right next to a jungle so i went searching for a jungle as well boom and i found a jungle but i don't know if there's an actual mangrove biome next to it so we explored the jungle for quite a bit this one was actually pretty vast but after so much walking we finally found ourselves a mangrove biome there it is and this one's a lot bigger than the last one we were at this is me gathering a bunch of frogs and tying them to leads this is definitely the safest way to actually capture these amphibians at least in minecraft okay now the one thing i was actually confused about was where to actually place my house because i had to build it in a pretty interesting area at first i was thinking i'd build it underneath a tree because that would look kind of cool right but then i thought hey i could probably just grow one in between this cool looking river and make the branches you know touch each side of the river and make the house on there so that's what i tried doing i tried my best to plant this thing but after so much time nothing happened it just didn't grow i haven't bone mealed a bit and there's been no progress so i gave up on that instead i decided to choose something that was a little bit closer to some sort of a little bit of a hill that way we can actually mine into the wall and make room for everything and yes yes don't worry this house is also underneath the tree the new mangrove biome also comes with this thing called redwood at least that's what i remember what it was called and we started building the walls out of it then i started digging into the hill as i mentioned before i made an area for the frogs on the left and as you can see on the right i made a beautiful area for the allies doesn't this just look like the coziest home ever be honest with me don't sugarcoat it like look at all these happy frogs living about here it's a wonderful sight i also realized i'm still stuck with iron armor i kind of want a diamond armor before the end of this video so that's what i'm gonna do i went mining on a bit of a mining trip down and below now these areas were very interesting looking like i don't even know what to even think about this place but one thing that we did find was we managed to find a yellow axolotl look at how cute he is I'm gonna name him Warble. Yeah, that's a fine name. He'll be joining us on our adventure. In a bucket, though. He's not gonna be really walking around with us because there's no actual way to bring an axolotl with you. What a shame, Mojang. That would have been a pretty cool feature. I'm just saying. But besides that, we carried on. We also needed some obsidian. This was so we could enchant a lot of our stuff, such as tools and armor, just so we could prepare for the Guardian fight. I enchanted my iron stuff, but as you can see, we got some trash enchantments. I don't know why I thought this was gonna be a good idea, because I wasted levels. But whatever. Instead, what I ended up doing is creating some diamond armor and then enchanting that too. Now, I know the enchantments aren't the best, but I was kind of lazy to get the bookshelves. Luckily for us, the fortune pickaxe that we found from the Bastion actually helped a lot when gathering these diamonds. And this is the cute little home I gave Werble. What do you guys think? You guys like it? I mess with it. You know, Werble's a little shy. That's why he's not looking at you guys. But it's okay. He loves y'all. Another thing we actually needed was some golden apples. So I went ahead and grabbed some apples and the remaining gold that we could even find. On the bright side, though, with this new cave generation, gold wasn't that difficult to find at all. Days 91 to 100. Our main goal was to set out and actually locate the Guardian. Elder Guardian, my bad. The Guardian 
Indian are like the lackeys. And I'm gonna tell you guys now, this was not an easy feat, okay? We got ourselves a boat, and there was a chest on the back, and we started mowing. A uh, rowing, I meant rowing. And we went biome after biome after biome. At least eventually we found ourselves an ocean. That's one of the only good things that came out of all this exploring. And after so long, we finally found ourselves a guardian temple. I just searched it up. This thing's called a monument. I forgot. But listen up, okay? We made a little bit of a base at the top of it. We also got mining fatigue, which meant we can't break blocks as fast. Really annoying stuff, especially when you're trying to break into somewhere. But listen, okay? There are three elder guardians that we have to take down to cancel the effect and basically conquer the place. Mark my words, this place is gonna be mine. Now, we actually had a little bit of a trick up our sleeve. So for you guys that don't know, if you place a door in Minecraft underwater, it actually creates an air pocket for you to breathe in. So long, scuba gear, we don't need you. So we did a bit of exploring and we finally found ourselves the first elder guardian. This guy was at the very top of the monument in the first place. My first method was actually trying to hit it, but you know, getting close, I kind of got zapped by him. So we ended up switching tactics to my crossbow. This honestly worked for a while, but as you can see i almost died but then i healed up so it's all good now if you thought that was bad i went in for some sword hits and it brought me down to half health this maniac of a boss bro and it's not only him i have to fend off i also have to fend off the lackeys i just didn't want to deal with them i just wanted to kill the elder guardian and dip honestly i think i'm taking this stuff way too lightly and after all this hitting him with the sword and shooting him down with the crossbow I finally got the last hit on him. Interestingly enough, he dropped a sponge and this weird shard looking thing. I think it's what these walls are made out of in the first place. The second one was a bit difficult because it genuinely took a lot of time to find and I was quickly running out of doors like it was nothing. Y'all saw how many of those I made in the beginning? I didn't even think I could run out of this stuff. Right, so I thought this was gonna be just like the first boss, but one thing was kind of different with this one. At first, you know, I got a couple crossbow shots in, but after a while, the shots started deflecting. So we had to switch up our tactic. And the tactic I decided to use was actually ring around the Rosie. Literally, I just went around this like weird large pole looking thing. And I kept shooting him the first chance I got, then dip. And guess what? It worked for all y'all that didn't believe in me. I got this stuff in the bag. And finally, I got myself the final hit. The biggest issue here is I ran out of doors. So I couldn't actually explore the rest of the place. So we had to take a bit of a detour from the trip. There's only one elder guardian left, so we just needed to get a couple of doors and get back here. Another issue that kind of crept up on me and I didn't realize was we were running out of bread. That stuff was burning up like it was nothing. It's because of all these guardian hits. I kept having to eat. I found an island nearby and I found a bunch of a wood so i started mining into that you might have also noticed i have 64 wood in my inventory i actually didn't want to use that because i wanted to keep some emergency like what if i gotta make a crafting table or something you know what i mean then i killed a bunch of cows got the shmeat but yeah it just turns out the village loot wasn't actually enough to keep us throughout the whole entire challenge i mean are we really that surprised 100 days is a long time afterwards i then found this little beach to sit by and i started smelting up some of the nice food we got yeah, I cooked it with wood. I wish I could cook like this in real life, to be honest. Also, don't mind the skin change. I swap between the two all the time. Me and this turtle were just chilling as the food smelted into munchies for us. We had one more elder guardian to slay, and we're done with the challenge. And finally, we headed back to the monument to kill the last elder guardian. Now, I can't lie to you, this guy, I swear he got lost. Like, he's not even supposed to be here, but he ended up here somehow. So I started fighting him in this huge room. The amount of lackeys that he had just roaming around shooting me as well was really annoying, by the way. I, I, I couldn't even make this stuff up, even if I wanted to. But it's okay, we got this. We got the last hit on him, and he was dead. That's it. We beat him. 